What's up everybody? Welcome to Orlando, Florida. On today's video, we're going to talk about the top 10 worst hoods in Orlando, Florida. Despite Orlando being quite possibly the fastest growing city in the entire country with developments in quite nearly entire cities spawning up in the outskirts of Orlando and being one of the most popular destinations for tourists in the entire world. The people that live in Orlando, not all of them are living the dream vacation that you have when you visit there. In fact, Orlando has some of the grimiest inner city neighborhoods in the entire state of Florida, so the reality for the people of Orlando is not always that of the people who move here from other states with a lot of money or those who visit the city just to vacation. In fact, the city of Orlando has the 10th highest crime rate in the entire state and is rated as the 20th worst city in the entire state to live. Those suburbs and those sprawling new communities are on the outskirts outside of city limits and in fact, even some of the worst hoods or outside of city limits. So we're gonna talk about the worst 10 neighborhoods in the city of Orlando, and some of these neighborhoods are not within city limits. We just spent four entire days in Orlando touring all the neighborhoods. So this is recent information combined with statistical analysis, a little bit of real world mixed with statistics. Number one is Lake Dot just to the north of the city is a small neighborhood that despite being close to downtown and great attractions is one of the craziest neighborhoods you'll ever encounter in the city of orlando homeless people are everywhere they're begging crime poverty this place has not too many good things going for it while most people who go to orlando base their entire trip around the tourist destinations there's people like me who go to Orlando and find the grimiest neighborhoods they can to post it on YouTube. So if you're a local, I'm sure you're very happy that I'm doing this for your community. I can already see the comments on this video from the people that live in Orlando. Man, you didn't even go to the hood, though. He's only showing the black areas. He's racist. I live here in a cardboard box. It is not even that bad. Moving on to number two, the most dangerous neighborhood in the entire city when it comes to statistical analysis is the Paramore neighborhood. Located just outside of downtown, despite the fact it is close to one of the city's most important areas, and from the city neighborhoods, you can see downtown from the corner where you're slinging crack. This neighborhood has taken advantage of its prime location to slang crack, yayo, fentanilio, and all types of horrible crap into the community to tourists who are here on vacation and forgot or ran out of their own supply. I talked to one of the residents of the neighborhood who refused to be on camera and he told me that this neighborhood is a great place to start a small business off a street corner and you can just make a lot of money. There's a lot of opportunity unless you get shot or stabbed or picked up by the police. Number three is West Colonial. You won't have to worry about getting picked up by the cops in this neighborhood because they're afraid to come out here. There is so much crime in this neighborhood, even your grandma could get stolen. Surrounded by other great communities like Pine Hills and Mercy Drive or Ivy Lane, it is located as a hood-centric opportunity. Now this neighborhood will be a great place to start a Firestone Tire Company, a Church's Chicken, a Popeyes, or a Barbershop. There are already used car dealerships, liquor stores, and even a giant flea market here. What other things could you need for your hood accommodations? Many years back, the area around Highway 50 used to be the worst part of the city with the most concentration of homelessness. But then it got so bad that even the homeless people left, leaving only the lowest scum of society used car dealerships and realtors. Number four is Malibu Groves. 
but the locals call this area Ivy Lane. Now, if you're from the city of Orlando, you may not be familiar with the neighborhood boundaries of your city, so most people just call this whole area Ivy Lane, but really, that is the official government name of this neighborhood, but a lot of people that live in Orlando don't know that because instead of picking up a map and learning about their city, they're listening to 3-6 Mafia mixtapes. While you were at the rent a wheel getting your rims financed, instead of being on Instagram posting about it, you could have been on Wikipedia learning about your city and then you would know your neighborhood boundaries. But you don't know that because you a big bear white looking dude. I can already see somebody in the comments saying, I've lived here for 50 years and I've never heard of my neighborhood being part of the worst places to live. And my reply to that is, You've been in that hood for 50 years, and you fi you ain't figured out a way to get the crap out of there. It's something wrong with you, man. Moving on to number five, Mercy Drive. Despite the name Mercy Drive, these folks ain't got no mercy on anybody. I think instead of like mercy, like kindness mercy, I think it means like mercy. Like you give a guy $10, and he gives you, and you're like, oh, mercy, you know, because he's grill. Not funny at all. Y'all ain't laughing at none. There's, some, there's something wrong with y'all. If you from Orlando and you've been on this street, shame on you for going there. We know what you were doing. Don't I, I know what you I I know what you were doing when you went. Don't don't act like I don't know what you were I know what you were doing. It ain't all bad people in the hood in Orlando. In fact, at the end of the video, I want to share with you guys a really compelling story about one neighborhood in Orlando that has beat all the odds and stereotypes. But it sure as crap isn't Pine Hills. This neighborhood fits all the stereotypes that you could associate with a bad inner city neighborhood. More often than not, instead of saying Pine Hills, the locals refer to this neighborhood as Crime Hills, as if saying there's a lot of crime within that little area right there. The artist John Young, who is respected in the city of Orlando for his song, The City I Love, which back in the day was like the song that identified Orlando. He mentions the neighborhood and a few establishments within this neighborhood. Therefore, this neighborhood definitely has to be on the list. Although I will say that despite being a very bad neighborhood, being one of the worst highways in the entire city of Orlando, I have spent time in this neighborhood and I like a lot of the local businesses and I don't think it's that bad personally. Number seven is Sanford. Now I did mention on this video that a few of these places were not within city limits. Now Sanford is a city and it's got great neighborhoods. This one you're looking at here ain't the nice neighborhoods. It's a beautiful city, it's got historic neighborhoods, it's got a beautiful lakefront, but it also has some really bad neighborhoods. When I say Sanford, I'm not referring to the whole entire Sanford. I don't want to see somebody in the suburbs like, I live in a $500,000 neighborhood in Sanford. Yeah, that's you. I ain't talking about your part of Sanford. I'm talking about the hood in Sanford. It's considered one of the most dangerous cities in the Orlando metropolitan area. And even though it is far away, I will include it on this list because the city of Orlando has so much tourism, so much growth and development that a lot of the neighborhoods have had to get pushed back. And not only recently, like from a long time ago, places like APK and Sanford have really been hoods of Orlando, despite the fact they're not directly in Orlando. Number eight is APK. This is one of the places that I mentioned that despite not really being part of the Orlando city limits, it's in fact its own city. And again, not every neighborhood in here is bad. So if you live in a nice part of APK and some gated community way off in the suburbs, don't go on here like, I live in APK and I have a pool and I am a realtor and I'm very offended that the city that I live in is on this list because I sell houses here to people from New York who have no idea what the crap I'm selling them and you're showing them the part of town that I didn't want them to say. So yes, there are nice parts of APK, but there's also a lot of hoods and we're talking about the hoods of APK definitely some of the grammiest things you'll see within the orlando area now the city does have a lot of great things as well it's not all bad don't put words in my mouth i have a bottle of apple moonshine from tennessee and that will do that for me number nine on the list is highway 192 between orlando and kissimmee this area is still part of the tourist district but if you pay close attention there are some really poor mobile home parks mobile home communities and apartment complexes here 
that are very, very crappy. In fact, some apartments were so crappy that they went out of business, like this one. Do you know how crappy you have to be to fail at being an inner city apartment complex? If you fail at being an inner city apartment complex, I, I, there's no cure for you. you. You need to find something else to be. I was actually looking at government housing in Orlando to see how they were rated. There's actually people that go on the internet and complain on Google reviews about their free government housing. You got free government housing, you ain't got nothing to complain about. Number 10 is the Oak Ridge neighborhood. Now again, the locals may not even know that this is a neighborhood within the city of Orlando, the neighborhoods of Americana, Texas, and a few of the other hood neighborhoods that people mention are within the boundaries of the Oak Ridge neighborhood. But of course, the locals don't know that. All they know is Texas. I think Texas is a neighborhood or Americana is a neighborhood. These are not neighborhoods. These are just streets. But the city of Orlando, the locals refer to streets as neighborhoods. So I suspect there's going to be a lot of confusion from the people of Orlando when they see this video and they think, why isn't Ivy driving? Why ain't Texas on her? Why ain't Americana? Those are not neighborhoods. Those are streets. But the people of Orlando, they just don't know any better. Bless your heart. Good thing there is an outsider who doesn't even live here to explain that for you. There's nothing the locals like more than having a complete outsider to your city make a video about your city and tell the locals who live there what they don't know about their own city. I mean, the local people, they love it. It's just love when somebody who doesn't even live in their community does this for them. I mean, it's, it's so nice of me to take time out of my life to, to talk about your city. So if you're a local from Orlando and you don't like my video, you can always hit the comments and tell me how much you hate me and how horrible I am and how I'm not from your hood and I shouldn't be talking about it. How are you going to have your baby mama stab me up because you're on probation right now? This is a preliminary video. It means, and then in like six months to a year, we'll go back to Orlando. We'll check out these neighborhoods and we'll make a list that is actually the top 10 worst neighborhoods in Orlando. I'm getting a lot of information from the internet, from statistics, and that stuff is almost never accurate. Like there's always a neighborhood in downtown that has this huge crime rate because there's like millions of people visiting that neighborhood, but it doesn't exactly mean that it's a dangerous place. It just means that there's more people there. So yeah, you can't base a video like this strictly off of statistics. And you have to be up to date because neighborhoods change quickly. Look, Pine Hills would have been number one on the list maybe like two or three years ago. But I was just in Orlando and I saw a bunch of neighborhoods that were way more hot. So if you live in that neighborhood, you're just not doing enough crime anymore. You got to get your stats up, homie. And these videos are very useful to people who are moving to Orlando because there's always locals like, man, I don't even know why you made my city look bad. Well, there's people that are moving to your city and they really don't want to end up on Texas Avenue or Pine Hills. But their realtor might put them in those communities, one, because they're just trying to make some money, and two, because legally they're not allowed to tell you if an area is high crime. Therefore, they're putting people from out of state in neighborhoods that are really bad, and that's not cool at all. I think the Fair Housing Act was enacted to protect people, and it's actually doing more harm than it is good because it's putting good people in really bad neighborhoods where they're immediately victimized by the locals. And a lot of these statistical companies that are linked into real estate are starting to get rid of their crime mapping data because they feel that it threatens the real estate side of business. In other words, it's only going to get worse. Quoting the Fair Housing Act laws as the reason why they're doing it. But the real reason they're doing it is because they're running out of real estate in good neighborhoods. So now they're forced to put people in bad neighborhoods and their own statistical information is getting in the way of them being able to make a profit. So the work that we're doing is helping a lot of people. It may just look like we're making fun of your neighborhood, but think for a minute. If somebody's looking at the top 10 worst neighborhoods in your city, it's probably because they're going to move there in the future and they want to know what areas to avoid. Don't you think that they deserve the opportunity to have somebody inform them about that? 
And then finally, there's always a person that says, why you only show the bad side of the city? Why don't you show the good stuff? For one, there's millions of other people who show the good side of Orlando. It never ceases to amaze me how when we go to a city, we'll upload a video of the nice side and the video will get like 500 views and then we'll show the hood and it'll get like 20,000 views in a week. You're the one who clicked on this video. I didn't put this video in your face. You came here. So now you're mad at me because even though I upload good side videos, you wanted to watch the hood rat crap with your friends. All right, finally, there's a neighborhood in Orlando called Tangelo Park. And this is an African-American neighborhood, 90% African-American. And its crime rate is actually less than half of the Orlando crime rate. So there's this famous rich guy and he goes and he decided to invest like $10 million in educational programs for this community like many years ago. Now this guy owns a bunch of hotels in Orlando. He's from New York. He's like a big money guy. And he decided to do an experiment in this neighborhood in Orlando where he gave the children like all the resources they could ever want. And now... This neighborhood, like years down the road, is actually used to be the worst neighborhood in Orlando. Tangela Park was the worst neighborhood in Orlando. And the demographics of the neighborhood didn't really change. What changed is that he gave the students the investments they needed for their community to have some of the most incredible investments possible. And now, this little neighborhood in Orlando has some of the best statistics for crime education, everything, which goes to show that if you give inner city people, especially the children, the old, the older generation, you can give them some food stamps and some section eight and hope they shut up and don't comment on my videos. I'm talking about the young people. If you give them an opportunity from a young age to focus on their education, have the resources they need, they will become productive members of society. It has nothing to do with your ethnicity, your race, or your family income. If you just give the children an opportunity, this guy did an incredible thing for this neighborhood when it goes to show that the reason some of these inner city neighborhoods are bad isn't because the people themselves are bad, it is because they're just not giving any opportunity. I created my own music to avoid copyright strikes, so that is the end of the video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and give me your thoughts and opinions about this video.